So, so Mum, we're just going to look at personal effectiveness unit again. Over the past few lessons, we've looked at uh, three different learning outcomes. So I like to recap just so we have a good memory of what we looked at. So learning outcome one was understand the personal and interpersonal skills required to manage effectively. So just learning what sort of skills you need to lead a team. Learning outcome two is understand the importance of motivation for personal effectiveness. So that was uh, how to motivate people, what sort of rewards might be a good idea. Learning outcome three was understand how to solve problems and manage disagreements and conflict in organisations. So we looked at what causes problems, how to uh, solve problems and what sort of skills a manager needs to solve any problems well. Um, today we're looking at learning outcome four. So understand the importance of CPD for managers and organisations and I'll tell you what that means in a moment. So examine the importance of CPD for managers and organisations is 4.1 and then 4.2 is using the comparison completed in 1.2 suggest appropriate areas for your own CPD in relation to a specific job role. So what happened is uh, in the learning outcome one at 1.2 we carried out a little uh, thing where we wrote on the Word document what sort of skills you were comparing your skills to the skills identified in Learning Outcome 1. So you're going to use those answers to answer uh, this here, but we'll get into detail about that soon. So personal effectiveness. So CPD, let me just put this uh, big so you can have a good view of it. So CPD, I love CPD. It's one of my favourite things to do. So CPD is actually con is continuing professional development. So it's where you're actually tracking how you're doing. You're documenting the skills that you've got. You're checking your knowledge and your experience. And you're just doing this formally and informally. So you're doing it as you're working. So it's not just, say, for example, when I uh, train to become a teacher. I've not just stopped there, I've continued, I've, I've had that initial training where you have your teacher training and then you continue on, you're uh, developing your skills, I've, uh, you know, you go on, you might want to get certificates in teaching uh, English as foreign languages, you might want to uh, get some sort of experiencing in how to do remote uh, learning over the internet. So things like you're just developing yourself, you're learning, you're checking constantly, applying different things to make yourself grow professionally. So I'll go over this because it's a very nice, um, succinct thing that just tells you exactly what it means. So CPD is continuing professional development. So it refers to the process of tracking and documenting the skills and knowledge and experience that you gain both formally and informally as you work. So it's, it's a record of what you're experiencing and learning and how you're applying it. And it's a term that is actually just used to what you're doing is you're creating a physical folder or a, a, a computer portfolio and you're actually noting down everything that you're doing to gain professional development. So if it's a course, if you're reading something, if you're watching any videos, and normally what you'll do is you make a development plan where you'll say, I've identified that these are my areas that I need to work on and this is how I'm going to do it. Um, Soma, have you come across CPD before? No, I haven't actually. I'm really interested uh, in knowing how to develop this uh, portfolio about. Is it is it for your own self? Yeah, just for you. Say? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, normally, what you'll do is we'll we'll go into a lot more detail in just a second because we've got uh, quite a bit of information on this. But what you'll do is you could be working. You can either do this for yourself where. That you've decided that you want to do this course and you're aiming to do something to go towards this course. So this uh, course that you're studying now is helping you to uh, maybe move to another country and get a job or uh, even have your own business or be in, in a, like a management position uh, where you're working. Or it could be something that 
I just want to do some studying for myself. Right now, um, I've uh, got this qualification, but I want to get into, say, medicine. So I'm going to do a health and social care course, and I'm going to go to university and do medicine, and then I'm going to go on to be a doctor. So it's where you're planning for yourself, how you're going to develop your career. Right. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, because I'm also signing on uh, working abroad, I'll, I'll probably be uh, moving mm -hmm. to Canada. Do you think it's easier uh, to uh, let your children be alone when you're at work? Because if I be at work, uh, they'll probably go to school and come back on their it own. It depends so on how old they are. Um, every my country is five. Yeah. My, my yeah. youngest is five years old. And well, I'm very worried about you know, how, how will I manage them while I'm at work. How old is your oldest? My oldest is Marcella. He'll be 16 in May next year, yeah. next month. Legally, yeah. uh, legally, by the time mm -hmm. they're, I think it's 12 or 13, it depends on mm -hmm. every country. But in the UK, because I have my oldest is 14, uh, my son, he's 14. Then I have an 11-year-old daughter, and then I have a 6-year-old son. So I've got three oh children. Oh, my God, they're the same. My, my, yeah, yeah, they're my very oldest. similar ages, yes. And my daughter is 10, and then I have a son who's 6, 5. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. He turns 6 next month. So it is, it's uh, the very similar ages now. Uh, sometimes um, I've had to go into school when I was working in a school, and um, because I'm uh, doing on college now but when i was working in primary school at times i have had to leave uh, my eldest in charge of my two younger ones and it's fine as long as you don't leave them alone at night you're not allowed to leave them alone at night and that's a certain age i think that's 16 and plus so even for that you'll be fine but um at this age uh, leaving them at home after school for a couple of hours or if you're working and they've got a day off it's fine what we normally do is um, I have my phone on me, my children have got their phones on them, my eldest, they're able to contact uh, my place of work. Uh, if I was in the school, for example, they're able to phone the office or they're able to give me a call if they can't get through. So uh, your workplace will be quite understanding if they do need to get in touch with you. So, but it's something... I have my father uh, who can yeah. look after them. I have two maids at home. And over there, we won't see any, any maids or people working for us. Yeah, so, I understand. Uh, it's that, um, that support system gets taken away, doesn't it? Yeah, so I, yeah. I, I was really worried. And I, I, I keep thinking about it, how will I manage? So probably I'll be developing this CTD over there. Yeah, <laughs> so legally you should be fine. I mean, um, it depends on where you're wanting to go. Is it UK? Is it kind of where you're thinking of? But um, just check with the um, legal age limit for the country that you want to go where children are okay to be on their own during the day. But a 16 year old is more than capable of looking after a six year old. Um, they'll still phone you if there's a problem. But, 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 but do you think they fight when they're alone? Or do you think that the eldest one uh, Mine out? don't. My, my okay. three children um, okay, argue so and lucky. fight when I'm here. <laughs> when I'm gone, they're the best friends. <laughs> Wow, maybe that's psychological, you know, because they know yes. that the parent is not there, so they need to behave. And I think it's also that they know they've got the freedom to watch whatever they want, do whatever they want. They can play on their phones, they can go on the iPad, they can go and uh, play a bit of games on the Xbox. So uh, they've got more freedom when you're not there. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And, and it's safe to be alone at home, right, with, with all the yes. gadgets like yeah. They might not go into the kitchen and do something awful, but I don't know. No, um, uh, my um, my older two children are very uh, competent. They know how to... What I'll do is, if I'm going to be going out to work, I'll make sure if they're going to be at home. Um, when I was working in primary schools, I was only working three or four hours a day, so it wasn't very long time anyway. I'd give them their breakfast, I'd leave for work at 11 o'clock, but I'd make sure that I'd have their lunch... Um, I'd make the sandwiches or make the roti, whatever they needed, and make sure they know that this is ready and all they've got to do is warm it up. But the older children, they're quite uh, skilled at being in the kitchen. So they can make a snack, they can get some juice. So I, with my a few years of experience where my oldest, if we've only been doing it for a year or so, where he's uh, looked after the little ones, we've not had any problems. So touch wood, 
it's been fine. Mashallah, that's great. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a it's a genuine concern because you try to balance uh, being a mother and also working as well. So I understand exactly where your worries are coming from. Yeah, but that's right. Talk to your uh, when you do get into your workplace. Talk to your uh, employers, and then just explain this is the situation. I might need to make a phone call. Sometimes I might receive a phone call, and um, I'm pretty sure the children are going to get used to, you know, managing and being able. They're old enough; they'll be fine. Because uh, because usually uh, in your country, the school gets over at three, probably at four, I think, because they also have after school clubs. So uh, they only have two, three hours. Uh, uh, for your work time to get depends on what school, uh, if you're thinking about England, if you're uh, depending on what school you want to send them to, you need to check what their rules are. Now, the school that I worked in, they didn't have an after school club, but they, um, after school provision, but they had after school clubs which only lasted an hour. But uh, some schools that uh, relatives of mine go to, uh, my nieces and nephews go to, they've got after school uh, provisions where they're actually looked after until 6 p.m. So you've got until six right. o'clock to pick them up. So you can drop them off early and pick them up late. You just need to pay a little That's bit extra to do these services. That's great. We are actually yeah. planning to immigrate to Canada, not to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I have no idea about that place, but probably, oh, I'm sure. I think it's, it's, um, it's a basic thing, uh, to be honest. And then you can also uh, hire a childminder to just uh, look after them for a couple of hours. So, you know, so it is possible. There's lots of things that you can do. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. I, oh, you're very I'm welcome. Positive now. No, there's the genuine concerns, I understand. Yeah, I know. Okay. So I'll, I'll continue into um, the next slide. Okay. So we've got some key features of CPD, so continuous professional development. So it's a documented process. So that means it's actually being noted down. So you're either physically writing it on a, in a folder that you've got for CPD, or you're noting it in your uh, laptop. So you normally have like little um, software programs where you can put your CPD into. It's self-directed, so it's you leading it, not your employer. Your employer might say, uh, these are some things I want to focus on, but they're not in charge of it, you are. You're going to focus on learning from your own experience and you're going to reflect. You're going to see this word reflective or reflect a lot here. Reflect mean is, so, for example, if I'm teaching you now, later on I might think back after our lesson and think, oh, how did I go with the, the lesson that I had with so much today? Was it fine? Was there anything I could have improved? What did I do good? What did I not do good? And then I'll either keep on doing the good things that I did, or if I did something that wasn't good, I'll change it and I'll adjust it and our next lesson and try to improve myself for that. So reflect is just where you're looking back and seeing how did I do. You also, uh, CPD helps you to set developmental goals and objectives, so you're setting some targets for yourself. And it's also formal and informal learning. So what you're doing now as this course is formal learning, Informal learning might be you reading a book or going on the internet and looking at some videos. Right. And we just got this uh, lovely little diagram here of a continuing professional development cycle. Now you'll see everything goes, there's no starting point really. So you could go from identifying any areas you want to develop. So I might say I want to... Hmm? It's a cycle, right? Yeah, it's just a cycle, so it can go, you can start from action, you can start from review. So it's all you're doing is you're finding out what you want to develop. So I could say I want to get better maths, or I might say that I want to improve my written grammar. So then I'm planning how am I going to do that? Am I going to do a course? Am I going to look on the internet or am I going to read a book? Then you're doing the action and then you're reviewing it. What you're doing is you're saying, is this actually working for me? If it is, you carry on. If it's not, you change your action. Then you look back and see how did that go, and then you identify the same skill or another skill. So just, like I said, it goes in a cycle. It's ongoing. 
So CPT it is uh, like a different combination of approaches. You have different ideas and techniques that actually help you to learn and grow. So there are some stages of CPT. So the first is you're identifying it. So you're understanding where it's come from, where you want to be and where you're at. You're planning how you want to get there and what sort of uh, outcomes you want. And also how you're going to track your progress. And then you're acting on it. So you're acting on your plan and you're, you know, seeing, am I actually learning the right way? You're open to changing your experiences. Then you're reflecting, like I said, so you're looking back, you're seeing, was that okay? Was that not good? What did I do that was good? What can I do that's better? Sometimes when you've uh, done something, you know, in a normal day, you think, oh, okay, I, I went and I did this task today. I went um, and um, I, I uh, helped a customer buy something. What did I say? You automatically think, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, that was really good, what I did. So this just happens in your head automatically, to be honest. You're applying. So you're making opportunities uh, where you can put your practice into your learning. And then you're sharing your learning with communities. So if you've learned something, you might want to go and you might tell one of your people that you work with. You might say to them, oh, I learned, I did this new uh, course and I learned this, this and that. I learned how to be a good leader. And then you're sharing your information with that person. And then the impact is how is this learning? How is the CPD? What's the overall impact of it? So. Has it been good for you? Has it been bad for you? Or was it just, ah, uh, it didn't change anything? So you're checking what sort of effect it's had on you. So a good CPD needs to be well crafted and it needs to be delivered properly. So it's important to have this because you have benefits for managers that actually have uh, taken part in very good CPD. So some of the benefits are that CPD actually ensures that your capabilities keep pace with the current standards of others in the same field. So for example, you're a manager of a high tech, um, say of Apple. You go in and you're developing new systems and procedures and you're thinking of, right, my area is to develop this certain aspect of Apple. I want to develop how they, they're not, we're not using our fingers, our thumbprint to go in now. We're using our faces and says it's face ID. So you're wanting to develop a particular thing, but somebody else that might be doing the same job or within the same department as you, they might have more information than you. They might have more experience than you. So what you're doing is you're doing the right CPD, so the right development to make sure that you're on top of everything so that you know you can keep to the standards that you need for your work. And CPD also ensures that you maintain and enhance your knowledge. So you're keeping your knowledge, but you're also making it better so that you're able to deliver uh, a professional services to your clients, to your community, even to uh, the people that are working under you. Do you have any questions so far, Roma? Um, only one that... Uh uh, do you really need to make a CPD just to improve yourself or does it help you uh, make a good environment where you're working? It's both. It, it's both and I'll talk about some CPD that I've just done recently um, okay. within the last uh, year or so. Um, I, uh, this is to develop myself but also it'll impact on how you can work within the environment that you're in. So uh, a little while ago, um, even though I can teach English, and I've taught it for many years, sometimes you just need a certificate to prove that you can do this. So, for example, I can teach English in a, to an English learner very well, but to teach English to a foreign learner, so English as a foreign language, you need to have that piece of paper there. So I did a course, um, it takes around about 150 hours to go through. So what you'll notice that CPD is counted as hours, how many hours you put into that work. 
and I've got that and now that's helping me because I understand more about how to teach grammar and I know how to uh, teach about prose and past and present syntaxes that's also helped the place that I work with so what I can do is I can officially help my students I can show them I'm up to date with my knowledge I've maintained my knowledge and I've also learned new things that I wasn't aware of because things change don't they so you might have learned something 10 years ago but they develop the processes change so that's so that CPD there has helped me to do this so it's always it might be good for you but sometimes it will also help by your working okay so uh, the, the CPD you made tells you what you need to teach foreign students well right? yes yeah, it's, it's just teach students in general not even foreign students just in general it's updated my knowledge of uh, how because when I want to talk about uh, grammar and English or any of these things, that's fine. I can just talk about it. I can say, or I can automatically write down a letter or do some work and my grammar will be fine in it. But when you're actually trying to teach those things to somebody who's not familiar with that, you've got to use the right words. So we call it terminology. And when you're uh, taking part in courses, you're developing yourself, you're learning the, the right techniques. So you're developing your own skills, but then you're learning the right techniques to help your students as well. So I'm always doing something. I'm uh, always um, doing some sort of CPD, uh, trying to develop myself, just so I can keep on top of the changing environment. So wow. it, it does, yeah. So it's just... So it, it, a piece of paper uh, you need to focus on, uh, the things you don't know, the things yeah. you need to... Okay. So you can either write it down in your notebook uh, or you can have um, there's uh, software programs where you can log it in. You can make personal development plans where um, it doesn't come apart of here, but normally it's where you're, you're looking at what sort of idea you're thinking. I want to work on my maths. I want to learn how to teach grammar better. And then you're going ahead and you're learning from there. You're taking the courses or you're looking at some videos or you're reading some books or you're even talking to people who have more experience than you okay. that's, a, that's a really good thing to do actually so it that's the best way to learn new techniques and skills talk to someone who's got a lot more experience yeah sorry uh, you said everything you get on youtube so that's so helpful anything you would like to uh, can, you, uh, can you repeat that you broke up Sure. Uh, I said that YouTube is a very great help these days because even 100%. if you need to uh, improve your grammar, your grammatical mm -hmm. mistakes, you can just watch a video or if you want to, you know, improve yourself in math or do a course, YouTube is a great help. So, yes, that's, that's, uh, that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, you've got everything um, on there. You've got entertainment there, but you've also got all of these... Uh, yeah learning techniques so if you're not sure about how to teach say your uh, youngest child um, how to teach them uh, a certain say how to take what do you call it um, divisions so you're like oh what's yeah. the best way for me to teach them divisions and then you could go on YouTube and say oh this is the best for a five-year-old this is the best for a six-year-old so you're teaching them the way that they're going to get taught in schools and you're not putting one idea into their head and then it's getting completely changed in school so it's, it's a fantastic tool to um, you know, learn new skills. I know, and you can even learn cooking from YouTube. I learned so yeah. many recipes from that. It's always a good idea to uh, try and change your recipes as well. <laughs> uh, true. So, okay. as an overall, CPD just makes sure that your knowledge uh, is up to date and it's relevant, and that, like I was saying, that. Um, even though I learned a particular skill many years ago, I've refreshed that skill, and now I've learned about the new uh, trends and directions uh, and, and the skills that I use to teach grammar and uh, English to students within my own profession. So it also helps you to be meaningful, so you're making a contribution to your team, and you're more effective in your workplace. So this, me doing these things has helped me so that I can actually uh, give other uh, members of the staff, my own colleagues, 
some extra information and say this is the new trend that's come about and this is how we should be teaching this and they'll be like right we can adapt that into our lessons so you can uh, influence them you can coach them you can mentor others so it's a fantastic tool CPD also helps you to stay interested and interesting. So this is one of those things that you're staying interested in your career, but you're also being interesting because you've got different knowledge to give to people. You're not using the same stories. You're not telling them the same things. They're not getting bored of you. So they know that if they come to Soma, Soma's going to tell us different, different things now. She's learned something new. She can tell us what the best way to... Uh, use this skill within our areas. Right. And then yeah. it also... Mm -hmm. Interested and interesting is very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't want to be known as the boring one. <laughs> and then it also helps you to uh, just get your knowledge and, you know, know what you're talking about and know how to use the technology in your profession. So sometimes... Um, it has been a very long time since I'd used Excel, and Excel is the one where you use there's charts and you use numbers on it. So I hadn't used that for a very long time, for about probably since my university days. And then I had to go and I watched a few YouTube videos. Even though I knew the basic knowledge, it's nice to know how to uh, add charts into it and how to work things out. So um, I watched a YouTube video and I was refreshed a little bit on that how to use Excel well. And then that's improved my use of that software. So within technology, if you're not sure about how to use something, go on a course, learn about it, or just make sure you're reading up on it. Hmm. I think you should, you should just be having an ability to learn uh, because mm -hmm. all these tools are very uh, self explanatory you know, Microsoft Word and Excel. And no, that's true. Just we just need to go through the options and find new things. Like I learned how to make graphs and charts because uh, my husband he makes a security booklet, and I mm -hmm. need to just graph. So uh, I just called up my cousin who was uh, who was just a young graduate, and I asked him you know, how, how do you make graphs, and he yes. told me on the phone. And he started using it, and now uh, they're on my fingertips. So they're pretty easy if you um, if you have a knack of learning mm -hmm. how to, yes. you know. So what you did was you need to learn a new skill. You spoke to somebody who has experience in it, and then you started doing it, and then you, you looked into it yourself as well. So you're probably really good at it now. But when you start off, you think, oh, I'm never going to be able to do this. But you could probably do it with but your eyes closed, couldn't you? Yes, I am. And uh, are, you, are you good at explaining things? Because a person who can learn fast are sometimes not good at explaining things to others. You know, um, I, so, uh, I, I, the thing is that I learn myself personally, I learn at a fast pace. I, I tend to fly through things because I, I can, the reason that is because I can take a lot of knowledge quickly and I understand it. But that doesn't mean that I can't explain it to somebody else. I'm actually quite good at explaining it to other people. Because so just because you learn something fast, as long as you've got the patience to explain it to somebody else and maybe slow it down, and even if they're asking the same questions 10 times, it's okay. As long as you're patient with them, you still can explain it to somebody else. So I don't think it matters whether you learn slow or learn fast. It depends on how patient you are and how much time you want to take with that other person. Yeah, I think that's correct. Then we have um, importance of CPD. So it's um, this is a CPD for an organization. So this is the importance that you've got within your workplace. So you've got a competitive advantage over other companies. So when you're learning, your talent is gr uh, growing. You've got uh, you can offer your employment uh, employees, people who work under you, a good development plan because you know things. You're able to share your information, so you've got perks and benefits, and you're attracting other people to your organization. Because if you're learning new skills, and then you're implementing those skills within your work, you're making the work easier. You're making it flow better. 
So you've got an advantage over other companies that might not have the same sort of CPD that you've done. Then you've got increased employee loyalty. So if, when a company actually invests in employee training and development, employees feel valued and appreciated. So this makes them more loyal. And the more loyal you are to your employees, they're going to feel the same way for you. So they're going to stay with you. They're going to actually tell their friends and also other colleagues who might work at different companies and say that so my company looks after us. They pay for my uh, training. They're actually encouraging me to go and learn new things and they're helping me with it. So uh, you should come here too. So uh, they're more engaged with you. So within uh, the education sector where I've seen this happen, where um, CPD is being paid for, what is being developed is, we have something called teachers and teaching assistants here. We've got different levels of teaching assistants. Teaching assistants are there to, um, they're more or less like teachers, but they're there to help out. So they do one-to-one -one work for children. Now you can start off as level one, level two, level three, level four. What I've seen in my experience, uh, teaching assistants who are at level one or a level two, the schools will sometimes say, right, uh, do you want to go on to level three? We'll help you. So you can pay half, we'll pay half, and then we'll help you uh, do that. Even if they're not paying for it, they might just be there to mentor you or to help you. So they might just say, right, how is your course going? Is there anything I can do with it for you? Do you need any questions? Do you need any help? So it's always nice to have uh, that uh, input within your employee. Then you've got decreased turnover. So there's a company called SHRM. What they've done is uh, some research. And they've researched that employee replacement can cost a company between six and nine months of the departed employee salary. So the person that's left, it can cost around about that much. So besides from this financial loss, if you're getting a high turnover, it actually it will affect your profit, your company's profit. So if you're training employees and you're actually taking an interest in their career development, you're making them feel happy about working with you. So they're going to want to stay with you. They're going to uh, be happy where they are and they'll be like, right, we're going to stay for a longer time rather than leave in a year. And then the last point on this is, so you're having a flexibility in the market. So when you're getting training and development programs, they're actually making your company more flexible. So your employees are well trained. They know how to respond to changes, which will be really beneficial for future wise as well. So when they're able to adapt and change to different, so if you're putting out new policies, you're putting on new systems, you know that my employees are trained for this. They're actually going to adapt to this very quickly. So it'll help your company have success in the long term. So all of these very big slides that we've just looked through was 4.1. So we're, we're examining the importance of CPD for managers and organizations. Now we're going to look at 4.2. So you'll see this is blank. It's because we're going to fill, uh, put some things down ourselves. So for 4.2, using the comparison completed in task 1.2, and 2, 1 .2, suggest areas for your own CPD in relation to the specific job role. So I'm going to open my Word document. And I remember from the last time you said, if I remember correctly, that you were easy to uh, communicate with. So you gave me a few points last time. The things that are easy to communicate yeah. with, uh, talk, you, you, you're happy to talk. So what we want to do now is look at all the points that we've looked at for CPD now. What sort of things do you think you could do to, what sort of areas would you want to have for a CPD? Uh, if I'm working in an organization or mm -hmm. just the person CPD. 
just in, in it can be personal CPG our organization as well so it's where you're actually looking at areas you want to develop so um I know that I want to um uh, you know go into more of uh, train the trainer so that's a course that I'm interested in now and in how do I uh, develop myself to uh, train other people that work within with me so that's an area that I'm interested in doing so it's um with yourself, what sort of areas have you highlighted? Maybe it could be to do with administration. Maybe it could be to do with uh, learning a new system that might be in the workplace. So what sort of areas do you think? Um, I think it could be anything. Uh, it's it's either uh, if I'm supposed to make a PowerPoint presentation, maybe I need to work mm -hmm. on that. And um, on teamwork. I, I would like to learn how to develop teamwork and uh, mm -hmm. how to get positive results uh, within a team. And, um, um, that's how to about develop it. teamwork and get positive results, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, what about things like con? What about uh, things like uh, conflict management when people are arguing? Yeah. Uh, how are you with that? Yes, I, I don't think so. I'm too good at that in conflict management. I I sometimes get really emotional and I need to think straight. So I need somebody to uh, counsel me or guide me. Mm -hmm. So uh, in personal life, I always always get my father's guidance. You know, so guidance. Has, so you could say speak to a trusted yeah person. Person, then yeah. you could also have, uh, you know, uh, do training courses, training courses. conflict management, and, conflict management and then also uh, watch YouTube videos. True. So in how to, oh, I can't spell, in how to manage conflict. And then maybe things like learning, uh, learning a new skill. So um, developing your, uh, say, for example, if uh, there's a particular program that or a software program uh, that your organization use, then you want to actually um, learn how to work that. Now, before I didn't know how to work uh, Dropbox because that's something that I uh, use uh, because I work from home. The work gets sent to me, and then um, I'm getting uh, presentations, lectures. I'm getting student work sent back to me, and I'm having to send things to the students as well and things to my workplace as well. So when I'm working from home, like we all are at the moment because of um, lockdown and everything, um, I've had to learn how to do it. So you still have a lockdown. Yeah, we're in the second lockdown now. <laughs> We had uh, a lockdown in March, uh, and then we had a mini lockdown in, uh, I think it was October, and now we're in a full lockdown again from uh, January. So it's supposed to end in the middle of February, but um, we've got, we keep getting news that it might be extended until after Easter, so that'll be after March. That's why uh, we have lots of children at home. <laughs> okay. right. I also would like to uh, work on, what was I going to say? It just came into my mind. Mm -hmm. I think it was, oh, sorry, I forgot. Sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. But then you can always um, add it on when you remember it. Just make a note of it. And then add yes. it on. Uh, I got it. Decision making. I also need to. Yes. That's very I, important. Mm -hmm. I also need to work on decision making because when I need to make a decision, I'm so confused. Um, yeah. I I have to be uh you know I need to know the points how to make a decision how to come to a conclusion. Yes. Yeah, because as a manager, as a in a role of responsibility, you're going to be looked at to um, say should we do this or this you tell us and you can't say oh no you decide so yeah yeah 
So we've written, wrote in the, written, wrote, written down a few things. I can't talk today. So um, things like PowerPoint presentations, how to, so I can do basic PowerPoint presentations and that's something that I could develop as well to make them fancy how to put the effects in. I think everybody has an area where they can develop. So how to develop teamwork and get positive results. Let's just put um, bullet points on these. Conflict management. So you could um, speak to um, a trusted person, go on a training course or watch some YouTube videos. Learn new skills, like I learned how to um, do Dropbox now, I'm perfectly fine, I'm really easily able to work Dropbox now. Yeah. And then decision making, so to be less confused and how to come to a decision in a timely manner. So you're not taking too long, you're not being too quick, but you need to get your decision made in, in a proper time. Right. So all of this that we've done today, was uh, learning outcome for. So we looked at uh, CPD, why it's important for a manager and why it's important for an organization and how it helps them. And then we looked at what your own skills were compared to what areas we identified in learning outcome one. So I'm going to turn the recording off on here now.